Greetings, how do, and a oh, good day to you. Well, I kind of missed my target for the uh, P12 video, but um, hey oh, these things happen. Now, I could have done an update a week ago, but um, when I looked at the kit, despite the fact that I had actually done quite a bit of work on it, it didn't really look like I'd done a lot. So I thought, what the hell, let's put this off for a bit, um, get some more work done, and then I've actually got something substantial to show you. So that's what I've done. Now, you may notice I am wearing my shiny new work plastic t-shirt. Do have a look at the store where you can get items like this and uh, hoodies and mugs and stickers. Oh my. And all sorts of other things that you don't really need, but you know what you gotta have. Next week, I believe they're having a free shipping deal. So now's the time to get on it. Um, microphone not included, sorry. So. Where am I up to with Hasegawa P12E? Well, I managed to get to the big old city and I got uh, stocked up on plastic strip from Express Hobbies in Saskatoon. So here's a gratuitous plug for you fellas. Send me money. Here's where we are. I got all the framing done on the fuselage halves. Fairly happy with how that's coming along. Took a fair amount of effort, but uh, I like to think it's worth it. I've also started to do some of the interior fittings and I've added the mount for the 30 caliber guns. So this is just about ready for paint and I'll get to that in the, uh, in the painting section. Seems reasonable. And I've also done a fair amount of work on the cockpit floor. Although once again, it doesn't really look like I've done a lot, but I've added the heel boards from five thou sheet, um, cut slots in the floor for the rudder pedals, I've added from the kit rotor pedals and you may notice there's a plastic strip down this side and that's because for reasons known only to themselves Hasegawa molded this side of the floor wider than this side of the floor so I've just added this to even things out a bit but this is also almost ready for paint. Now I was going to scratch build a new seat from sheet plastic but when I looked at it, there was a fair few curves in there that would have been a little difficult and finicky to replicate from flat sheets. So I decided to go a much more long-winded and troublesome method because apparently I like to make things difficult for myself. Go figure. So I took the kitsch seat, the seat, cut the back off, and I sprayed it with silicon mold release, which is this stuff here. This is a leftover from my resin casting days, which hopefully one day I'll be able to get into again. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I then crammed this full of milliput to make myself a mold, which I will use to vacuform a seat pan. Now I think ultimately this will be easier and look a lot better than trying to uh, scratch build these shapes from cheap plastic. Um, I guess that remains to be seen, but we'll, we'll see. That's the plan anyway. And if you're interested in both milliput and uh, vacuforming, please do have a look at my other videos on those very subjects. Now, I have also built the wings. And here's the bottom wing. Here's my spar that I added as per the previous video. Um, and when I uh, test fitted my fuselage halves together and test fitted them to the bottom wing, I couldn't help but notice that I had a fairly, sorry, that back together. <clears throat> Come on, work with me. There we go. There we go. Where was I? Yes, test fitted that together and I couldn't help but notice I had quite a substantial gap in there. Very annoying. Now, I could have um, fixed that by moving the top wing halves inward when I glue this together, but that would have meant that my wing ribs, top and bottom, wouldn't have matched up, which would have been rather annoying. So, what I'm going to have to do is just beef out the wing roots on the fuselage with some sheet plastic to fill that gap up. I'm not going to use filler because, of course, the real aircraft had fabric covered wings and a metal fuselage, and there was a distinct join right there so it wasn't fared over so filler would not be appropriate so 
there we are with that now i've also built the top wing there it is there uh, and i've added the cutout for the magnetic compass uh, and that's applicable applicable to both the f4b4 and the p12e um, and i did that by basically drilling carving that to shape which was a lot of fun because the plastic is really thick right there and then i've just added the uh, angled cutout from contrail plastic tubing uh, and you'll notice i've also drilled out the handhold in the back of the wing there um, now as i mentioned in part one of the p12e saga um, i did a lot of work on this seam here to get it as uh, a perfect a join as i could and i i thought i had accomplished that however when i glued this and clamped this up and checked it the next day despite the fact that I was very careful to get everything lined up, I discovered that I once again had a tiny gap down there. Oh, darn. So what I've done is I've filled that with Mr. Surfacer. Now, one of the things I really like about Mr. Surfacer is that when it's fairly fresh, um, that is, it's dried for a minute or two, you can actually remove it with IPA or isopropyl alcohol, um, which means that I can then scrub that away from the uh, the excess from the outer surfaces, which then leaves Mr. Surfacer in the gap, thereby alleviating the need to sand this join, which will destroy my wing ribs. It's good, be like. So I just need to do that a couple more times, just build that up. Um, and I just took some IPA, put a bit on a paper towel, and just sort of scrubbed away the excess. And it's a very good, be like. And we can carry on. Um, I think that's about all I have to say about the wings. I haven't yet done the seams on the leading edges or the wingtips, but we'll get to that. And you'll notice that, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, there's that pesky light, which is actually applicable to the F4B4. Um, and this is how they've done the P12E light, and that should actually be teardrop shape. So both of those got to go, and then I'll just make a new uh, navigation light on both wingtips for the P12. Okay, wings, um, oh, forgot thing. one thing. The pesky metal panels on the bottom, which I also mentioned in the previous video, I have removed those um, as best I could. Doesn't quite match up, but uh, I'll do a little bit more work on that and hopefully uh, we'll get it as uh, invisible as we possibly can once the paint is on. But if you're interested in how I did that, um, well, this is how I did it. So I've got two pieces of Dymo tape here to protect my wing ribs on either side. And for those of you not familiar with Dymo tape, maybe you're a little too young to remember this stuff. This is it here. It's a fairly rigid, but still flexible tape with a backing that comes off to protect the adhesive. And it was used with a Dymo label maker. And uh, as kids, we loved that stuff in the 70s and 80s. We'd go around labeling everything in the damn house. Cat, C-A-T, there he is, labeled, done. I'm sure our parents hated it, but it was great fun. And it's very useful for modeling, for uh, using as a straight edge for scribing, or as I've done here, to protect it because it's fairly thick and uh, you won't be able to sand through it very easily. I don't know if this stuff is still available. Um, a friend of mine gave me a whole whack of it, so that'll last me a good long time, but uh, I'm sure our good friends at Amazon or the like will probably have something like it or not the stuff itself. Now, I've also used a fine sanding drum for a Dremel here, just on its own. And you can use this wet, by the way, as I discovered. So I'll put a little water in there. And all I'm doing is just sanding back and forth like that. And the round shape of the drum will help to mimic the slightly concave um, spaces between the ring ribs. And I just kept doing that. And it worked very, very well. I removed the panels and then I just finished up with um, some fine sandpaper, again used wet, moved my Dymo tape to the next wing rib station, and carried on. Voila! Simples. Now I mostly built the resin engine from Vector, which is right here, with the faceplate test fitted on there. Um, obviously, I've not painted that yet, but I will give you a closer look at this shortly as well as the scratch-built instrument panel that I made. And there's one other very minor thing that I'm 
taken care of. So that's what I do. And that is that um, Hasegawa gives you a very nice trim wheel to go in the cockpit, which unfortunately is far too large. So I've started scratch building a new one, and I've got some Slater 30th hour rod. I basically bent that around some brass tubing, dipped it in near boiling water to set the shape. And then what I'm going to do is just cut the center out of the Hasegawa trim wheel and trim that to fit in my new one, which is smaller, better, stronger, faster. But let's have a look at that lovely resin engine from Vector, shall we? It's not difficult to see how much nicer the Vector engine is than the original Hasegawa one. Um, I'm sure I don't need to point out to you which one is which. The Hasegawa one, of course, has solid molded push rods um, integral with the cylinders and the faceplate all in one big lump of plastic, which doesn't look anywhere near as good as this one, which has got separate push rods and a uh, much nicer crankcase and a separate faceplate. Uh, I'll be painting that when I paint the rest of the aircraft because it will be the same color as the unit marking. Now, as nice as the Vector engine is, it was kind of tricky to assemble. The reason being that, and I have another one here for my F4B4, um, you will notice that where the cylinders go in, I just got a little pokey thing here, uh, we've got rings and they're recessed. And you would expect that the cylinders would just drop into those recesses and line up very nicely and give you a nice solid mounting. But unfortunately, with this one, that was not the case. They actually just sat on top of those rings, giving um, a very, very small gluing area. They actually just touched right at the edges of those rings, uh, which made for very tricky assembly trying to get those things lined up. Um, now, on this one, this later one, I assume it's later, uh, they have actually changed it. They've added these extra bits here uh, down at the bottom of each cylinder, and that does look like it would uh, just drop into the holes as you would expect. Much better. They didn't do that with this one. So what I had to do was punch out discs of 30 thou card, glue it to the bottom of each cylinder to give me a, a much better mounting and a much more positive alignment method. A little bit of extra work, but I got there in the end. The push rods I ended up adding from um, Slater 30 thou rod, plastic rod, not brass rod as I initially intended. Um, plastic is easier to work with. And I've also started to add the intake tubes on the back there. I've got three of them on, six more to go. So that is the lovely resin engine from Vector. And uh, as I did with the previous video, I will stick a link to their website in the description should you wish to purchase your own. I'm pretty sure they're still available. This is my scratch-built instrument panel. Nothing terribly fancy about this. It's a um, 5 thou card on the back, clear acetate in the middle, and then the instrument panel face is from 30 thou card. Uh, and the reason I've used the slightly thicker card is because the, the real one had a, a thick leather padding around it, so I've just used uh, the thicker card to replicate that. And the instrument knuckles themselves are from Airscale and Reheat. Now, one of the interesting things about this that I didn't initially notice when I was looking at pictures of it is the fact that the instrument panel is actually asymmetric. The right side bulges out more than the left, and the top row of instruments is pushed over to the right. Now, the only reason I can think of for this is to give the pilot more access to the caulking handle on the left-hand machine gun. Um, the caulking handles on both guns are on the right side of the gun, which would put the left one closer to the instrument panel. So I'm guessing they did this just to, uh, to give better access to that caulking handle. So we can see that quite clearly in this picture in the Squadron in Action book. Um, the instrument panel is it's bulged out over here, but not so much over here. Now, despite the fact that the caption on this picture says that the gun caulking or gun charging handles are clearly visible, it doesn't look like the guns are actually installed here. So that is erroneous. You can't clearly see the gun charging handles at all. However, in the picture next to it, the guns are installed. Uh, and we can see the handle here 
on the left or the right hand gun I should say um, and it's over here so actually it does stick out from the instrument panel um, so I don't know I don't know why they've done that maybe it wasn't to allow clearance maybe there was something else on the gun that required them to do that I don't know but it's interesting the uh, instrument panel is asymmetric now the other thing that it says here is that the interior color is natural metal uh, it is quite clearly silver uh, not only in this picture but in other ones I've seen but I very much doubt it was natural metal I suspect that they uh, followed the same process as they did in their P26 which was aluminum lacquer over a red oxide primer um, that's how I'm going to do mine I don't think it was natural metal that's just me though so there we have it. That's where I'm up to with the Hasegawa 132nd scale P12E. Next time, all going well, we'll get to some actual construction and maybe even some painting. Or is that the other way around? One of those two. Anyway, hopefully. So um, it's coming along nicely. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, if I do say so myself, I think the resemblance is uncanny. Don't you? Amazing. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Um, there is another video coming very soon. I'm well into that one. Completely unrelated to the P12E, but still modeling. Have no fear. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you all very soon. Remember to do all those things you got to do, otherwise the universe implodes. Like, subscribe, share, comment, ride a donkey, run for prime minister. Please run for prime minister. Get us rid of this damn quasi-dictator we're stuck with. And remember, buy stuff. Thank you and bye-bye.